Hello everybody. Um, thank you Georgina. Uh, I'm going to be doing a quick talk tonight, not quick, but uh, on Firebase notifications. So Firebase is one of the things that Google are promoting quite heavily these days. It's got lots of uh, lovely features. One of them is notifications. So if you've done any work on Android before with uh, Google Cloud Messaging, GCM, yeah that's right, Google Cloud Messaging, uh, Firebase Notifications is a technology kind of similar to that and I'll go through the differences and how you can use it in your apps. So first of all, Google Cloud Messaging is no longer called Google Cloud Messaging, it's now called Firebase Cloud Messaging. Uh, they changed the name with everything at Google I.O. this year um, to include the word Firebase. Um, if you've used Google Cloud Messaging before, Google uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging is very familiar. It's easy to set up and you can add push notifications to your app. And Firebase Notifications, which is different to Firebase Cloud Messaging, uh, sits on top and lets you do some kind of uh, marketing kind of promotions. It's part of the grow section that they list on their Firebase website, so you can kind of grow your audience uh, for your apps. So it's ideally used for kind of things like marketing purposes. Spamming people, really. <clears throat> um, there's two kind of modes to um, Firebase notifications. There's the kind of what I call the notification mode, and then there's the kind of the data mode, and they work slightly differently depending on how your app uh, is running, whether it's in the background or if it's in the foreground. So this little table you see underneath tries to explain it. I'll go into details on what on message received is in a couple of slides time. Um, but if your app is in the foreground and you receive a notification, notification, um, it'll go through the on message received uh, path in your code base. If your app is in the background, you'll get a notification displayed automatically uh, without any kind of code that you have to write um, in the system tray. If you send a data notification, this is gonna get confusing. If you send a data notification uh, and your app is in the foreground or the background, uh, it goes through the same code path uh, for both. Uh, and if you send a combined notification, notification, and data notification, um, it does the bit at the end. Basically the system tray again, and the on message received uh, for those ones. So those are the kind of the code paths. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about the on message received uh, in a second. How do we distinguish between notification, notifications, and data notifications? Um, if you look at these two JSON objects here, which hopefully you can read at the back, I tried to make the text as large as possible to fit on the slide. Uh, you'll notice in the JSON, uh, for notification ones, there's an object and sort of sub-object uh, hierarchy uh, called notification, and for data, there's one called data. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, the data one is very similar to how Google Cloud Messaging used to work. Uh, it's very similar. The notification stuff is the kind of the new bit that I'm going to be talking about uh, today. Uh, and you can send both payloads uh, in the same message if you want to. Uh, the on message received uh, callback, which I mentioned earlier, uh, is defined as part of a service that you extend and you place inside your manifest. Um, it allows you to process the notification uh, when your app is in the foreground, um, or if it's just a data notification, you can receive those uh, in the background uh, as well. And it won't be called if your app's in the background and you send a notification one. Um, how do you know if your app is in the foreground or not? A couple of ways. One of them is just to count the number of on-start and on-stop calls. There's a whole lot of other ways to work out whether your app is in the foreground um, or the background. That's just a pretty easy, easy one. So you can choose uh, what you might do in a similar situation here is if your app is in the, uh, the background, you show a notification uh, to the user in the notification shade. Um, if the app is in the foreground, you might show a dialogue on the screen uh, instead or a toast or a, uh, what do they call them, snack bar uh, instead. So you can, you can choose how to display the notification to the user based on the context of where the app uh, is currently run. Show me the code. My only image for the uh, slide. <clears throat> I will not do my Jerry Maguire impression. Um, so hopefully you can read that at the back. I struggle to read it on that monitor over there, so maybe at the back of the room it's a little bit hard to read, but that screen is a lot bigger. Um, in the Android manifest, uh, we're going to register two services and I'll explain why. You don't need one of them really, but you, I'll explain why you, have, you would have them both. So the first one is uh, going to listen for a Nintendo filter for the instance event ID and the second service is going to listen to the messaging event ID. The first service there uh, is going to be notified when the Firebase token that represents your device changes. So you'll get an update to say, hey, we've done some 
work at the back end or whatever it might be, the Firebase notification token that you're using to send notifications that this device has changed. So please update your local database at your back end, your third party database that you own. Uh, if you're storing those for whatever reason, this callback will let you update your database uh, and keep your database uh, in sync. The second uh, service is the one that contains the on message received callback and that's the one where you're going to be able to handle the notification that gets sent from the uh, Firebase uh, servers at Google. The next two bits of metadata that you might want to put in, it's optional, but you can put them in, it's probably wise to do so uh, in the manifest. These relate to the default handling of the notification. So when it comes into your app and your app is in the background, if it's a notification, notification, uh, the system tray, uh, the system uh, status bar will handle that automatically for you. So this gives you the opportunity to uh, insert your own uh, application icon, uh, which should be a fully white icon, which represents your app logo. You can use transparency, it shouldn't have uh, colors in there. And then the um, default notification color is the tinting color that's going to be applied to that. So in the notification status bar at the top, it's going to be displayed as white. When you pull down on the notification to read what it says, they're going to tint that logo again into you know, green or purple or whatever your app color is, and then it will be displayed as part of the notification. So those let you customize the uh, notifications as they come in uh, from the server. So the token service that I mentioned, uh, where you get notified that the Firebase token that represents your device has changed, pretty straightforward callback there. On token refresh, you can then query what the new value of that token is, and then you can call your backend server to say, hey, this value has changed. So you can use some kind of REST API that you may have defined for your service. Uh, that lets you keep your database in sync. You can then use that later on to send your own push notifications to this device uh, in the same way you would with Google Cloud Messaging. And the messaging service, uh, which contains the on-message received callback, here's just a bit of example code where you can check to see what kind of notification you have received. So there's a get data call on the parameter passed in. This contains the name value pairs of the information uh, that was sent uh, from the server. And there's a notification object as well. Uh, and if that's present, there's a get body and a get title and a get other attributes. Uh, on there as well, which you can then query. So you can receive both. So you need to handle both cases um, in here. Uh, and again, this will only be called if your app is in the foreground and it's a notification, notification or background for both, uh, if it's a, a data one. So there in the code is where, where you'd be able to choose whether you want to display a uh, notification to the user or maybe a dialogue uh, instead if the app is in the foreground. So once you've got all your code in place and you can show a dialogue or you can show a notification, how do you go about testing this? Um, you can send a notification payload uh, from the Firebase console. That's quite easy to do. I'll show you, I've got a screenshot of that uh, in a second. You can send a notification and data payload from the Firebase console. Again, very easy to do, but you can't send due to the fact that one of the fields is a required field. It would seem to be an easy fix on Google's part to to change that, you can't send data only payloads from the Firebase console. If you want to send a data only um, notification to your app, which would be almost identical to how you would send one in the previous Google Cloud messaging uh, setup, there's a little curl command line thing that you can run for your Mac terminal if you're on a Mac, and you just need to insert the device token as the last parameter and the first token uh, is the one from the server to say, this is my uh, unique key to allow me to push uh, as part of my app. And then you can construct any JSON object you like as part of the data, and then that can represent uh, the model uh, that we saw you know, two or three slides ago uh, for the payloads. So you can test it from your command line, you can send as many as you want. It's pretty quick, uh, uh, comes through, takes about two or three seconds. Now. Hopefully you can see the screenshot. This is the, a, a screen grab from the uh, Firebase uh, console. This is where you can go into the Firebase console for your project and click on the notifications tab and you can send uh, dummy notifications or real notifications to your users um, uh, using a nice uh, interface. This is handy because you can give access to your 
marketing people or whoever may be doing your app promotion. This is where the whole idea of the notifications are part of the grow aspect of your app um, in terms of you know, the, the way Firebase is, is trying to uh, partition bits and pieces up. So you can give this to somebody and say, hey, look, if you want to go and spam our users, go into this console and you can say, you know, on Australia Day, send a big happy message, happy Australia Day to everybody. You can set a time delay. You can choose who it goes to. So you might uh, restrict this based on the user must live in Australia, for example. They only care about Australian people. And you can send out a notification to all your users saying, happy Australia Day, please download our in-app purchases. And uh, yes, so these are the uh, fields that I've highlighted here that represent the different notifications. So notification payload, uh, you have to enter the message text, which is the first field at the top, and that's the one that's required, which then prevents you from not doing a data only one. So you can enter a message text and a title um, near the bottom. Uh, those go into the uh, notification itself. The title is actually used as well if you hook into um, Android Wear and uh, whatever the iWatch thing is called, um, it'll come up as the uh, short message uh, on the display of your wearable device. You can choose whether you want to send the message now or whether you want to send it later, so you can time delay them uh, to uh, match specific uh, events uh, for yourself. You can choose the recipients, and I'll talk a bit more about this in a second. So you can choose a single device, so if you know the token from the device, which is one of the callbacks we had earlier, you can you know, system.out.println that. You can paste it into the um, field there, or you can look it up in your database if you have it linked to a particular user account. You can type in the uh, Firebase token there and send a message to a specific uh, device. And the data payload, so that's kind of like a name value pair setup where you can choose any kind of data keys uh, that you want to send to your app. Uh, and a time to live, so that might uh, set to four weeks at the moment in this display. Firebase will try and send this particular message. It usually happens straight away, pretty instantly. But if the user is on holiday and they've got their phone turned off or their battery has died or whatever it might be, Firebase will try up to you know, four weeks you know, to deliver that message. I think four weeks is the maximum. So you might wait five minutes. If you're doing like a sports update app, you've got a sports thing, you know, it might only be relevant to send a message to say that your team has scored during the length of that 90 minute football match. After that, we don't really care about the push notification, so deliver it up to 90 minutes, and if it fails, just discard it. Um, yes, okay, that's not me. So how do you choose your set of recipients? Um, again, this is all kind of linked into Firebase. One of the great things, or maybe the bad things about Firebase is it's all kind of linked together. So if you want to start using bits and pieces, you kind of get drawn into using all the other bits and pieces. Um, so Firebase notifications are based on Firebase Cloud Messaging. So you, at the end of the day, you're just sending out push notifications like you would have done with Google Cloud Messaging. There's no real magic here. The real magic uh, with uh, the Firebase notifications is the fact that you get a sexy UI that you can give to people. It's not like a database table that you have to update or some UI you have to build yourself. Uh, you can give that to your marketing team to, uh, to use. And it hooks into your analytics. So again, as I mentioned before, you could send, or you could create a, a user audience in your analytics to say, hey, tell me about all the people who are in Australia, or people who are in Australia and have made an in-app purchase, or whatever your analytics is capturing uh, about your, uh, your app, you can then segment that off and choose that segment of your user base from one of the drop-downs that I showed you earlier. So you can say, hey, show, send a message to all Australian users who've made an in-app purchase, Happy Australia Day, thank you for buying our gold and jewels or whatever it is that you're selling uh, inside your app. Um, yes, so you get some other uh, cool things as well. So um, the Firebase console then tells you uh, some analytics about who's opened the uh, notification, who's read it, who's clicked on it. Uh, and, and then launched uh, your app, so you can actually see your user engagement uh, with the notifications, which is quite handy. And uh, yeah, you can also store uh, push to uh, tokens in your back end if you want to send them uh, programmatically. So you might have a thing that says when a user gets a high score greater than a thousand, send them a push notification to say, hey, congratulations. And again, it's a very similar mechanic. Your uh, way of selecting the user has changed, but the displaying of the push notification and the dialogue, if you're going to use that route, uh, stays the same. 
Um, so it's right once on the client. And that's about it. So some more info. Uh, there's two links there on how to use Firebase Cloud Messaging, which if you've used Google Cloud Messaging before is very familiar. Um, Firebase Notifications sits on top of that. It's very easy to set up. You only, as you saw in the previous slides, have to do a couple of lines of code. If you want the very basic setup where it handles most of it automatically for you, and then you can extend that with your own custom stuff if you want to start showing pop-ups uh, inside the app. And that's me.